The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 24th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. More important than that, though, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. But if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Please send it early and send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show right now. A bit of a mixed bag out there. That mix is really coming from the semis down seven and a half points. That's a quarter percent to the downside. Otherwise, the other U.S. indices are trading to the upside. The Dow is up 61. The S&P is up 11. NASDAQ 144. Russell's up 17. Tranny's up 90. Spot politics is below its 50-day exponential moving average. That puts the sale at the back of the S&P 500. Gold's up four bucks. Silver's flat. Lightspeed crude is up 81 cents. Trade at 94.54. Natural gas is back just a bit. And a 30-year Treasury trade out 136.14. That's off one full point and right now two ticks. Lead the charge dollar-wise. The upside you've got into it. Up 25 bucks, nearly six percent. Mercado Libre, 25 bucks, nearly three percent. Tesla. Nearly 15 bucks, 1.6 percent. Alumina up 12 bucks, 3.6 percent. Uh, I'm sorry, Alumina is up nearly 12 bucks, nearly 6 percent to the upside. To the downside, the Shakers are advanced auto parts off 20 bucks, a little over 10 percent. Scan Source down 6 bucks, 19 percent. Appellus Pharmaceuticals about 9 percent or 6 bucks. City Trends down 5 bucks and change at 70 uh, percent. O'Reilly Automotive down six bucks. Nordstrom is down four. That's twenty percent to the downside. Starbucks Group is uh, not having a good day. They're off about thirty percent, four dollars and fifty cents there. So, what do we want to start? Well, I tell you where we're going to start. We're going to start with the uh, chart that is the most important set of charts for us to pay attention to to understand what the market is communicating to you and I. And that's going to be the five-hour time frame chart for the equity future contract. So that's what we're going to put up on our screen here in the upper left-hand corner. You've got the five-hour time frame chart for the ES mini. The right-hand panel, you've got the NQ down lower left. You've got the Dow. And lower right, you've got the Russell 2000. Now, the oscillator and change line, that's that green, red, squiggly line. You can see that uh, price has not been above that or closed above that for quite some time. Well, right now, the five-hour bar is going to close at, unfortunately, not till 2 p.m. And it's 11 o'clock. But right now, as we take a look at the Russell 2000, price is above that level. That, and it has a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom uh, pattern out there. It's got a TD9 count bottom uh, pattern out there. So what price should do, well, hold on a second. I'm going to switch screens out here because what price should do is go tag. It's uh, uh, I should go tag the top of its profile, but there's a new profile. And I think it's trading above it right now. It is. So the new profile level for you to watch out here, this is, comes 2 p.m is at 1933.90, called 1934. If price is trading above that, then the Russell 2000 for its five-hour time frame chart is telling us it wants to rally. And its price target would be its TD9 breakdown level, and that's at 1998.90. 
The NQ right now is trading above the top of that, or not the top, is trading above its oscillator and change line. Again, this is a 2 p.m. call. But if prices trade above 1279.50, that's the top of its new profile, that will take it above that level of resistance as well as its oscillator and change line and suggest there is at least a change in trend. Now, its price target to the upside would be 13520. In the case of the Dow, it's got some work to do before it gets up to its oscillator and change line. So that first level to be watching and observing is at 33046. Uh, there is not a new profile. Well, I take that back. There is for the Dow. The new profile for the Dow has resistance at 33135. So if price is above that, that's a big signal to move up uh, back to the 33982 level. In the case of the ES Mini, the first area that it needs to clear is that oscillator and change line. And that is currently priced at 4144. If we get a close above that, then the level to be watching is 4161, call 4162. If we get a close above 4162, then what the ES Mini for its five hour time frame has signaled to you and I is that price wants to go target the 4285 level. So it's really the five hour charts that we want to be paying attention to out there throughout the uh, day. And uh, basically, we don't need to do anything else. Oh, yes, we do. We've got to go out to a caller. It's John in Philly. Hey, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well, uh, and I want to ask, can you hear me okay? I can, just fine. Thank you. Excellent. Very good. Steve, uh, thanks for doing this review on those uh, uh, five-hour charts. That's very helpful, and it frankly uh, weaves right into the question I wanted to put to you. Okay. Steve, uh, looking back over the past couple of weeks, oh, back into June, uh, you've commented and I've observed simultaneously back at that uh, June 16th, 17th bottom that the uh, the NASDAQ chart on the, 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 excuse me, the NASDAQ 100 cash weekly charts bottomed with a, uh, a patented Basil Chapman uh, trough G. And, of course, we've rallied since. Yes. Uh, in subsequent weeks, Steve, you have repeatedly discussed the behavior of the um, – uh, the Dow Jones in uh, a variety of different currencies, suggesting to you that a major top was not yet in place and right. would likely uh, see the Dow Jones make new highs in dollar terms sometime in the future, you know, whenever that's going to be. Correct. Uh, so with all that as background, is this setback here in, uh, you know, the NASDAQ, the NYSC, and the S&P 500, is this possibly just the pause that refreshes? And is this, if that's the case, are we making a bottom right here, right now? So that's a great question. And the easiest way for me to answer that question is going to be by taking a look at the daily time frame. Well, can we can look at it for the NQ or the NDX 100. So right now, I'll just take a look at it for the NQ. They both really show the same thing out there. And that is this. If we take a look at coming up, this is a daily time frame chart, folks, that we're looking at. If we take a look at coming off that bottom that John had mentioned inside the NQ back in June, what we can see is we have had basically, and now what these numbers represent are either consecutive higher closes or consecutive lower closes. The red numbers are consecutive lower closes. Black numbers are consecutive higher closes. When we come back from this break, we'll finish taking a look at this chart to answer John's question, which could be the answer is yes that this could be the bottom, and we're getting ready to move up to at least 13.342. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. back up folks so we're taking a look at the daily nq chart out here and uh, we've got john uh, from philly on the line and his specific question is is it possible that the uh, nasdaq 100 is bottoming right here right now and my answer to that question was yes that that is a possibility not just because anything is a possibility but because of the chart pattern where we saw a decline of three consecutive days to the downside now Coming off of the uh, bottom here in uh, June, we've seen that we've had uh, three. Now, yesterday may have been the fourth three-day knee-jerk reaction to the downside. Even in the decline, if we go back out here into the uh, July time frame, we just simply start taking a look at price movement to the downside. You get three to the downside, one to the upside. Two to the downside, one to the upside. Three to the downside, one to the upside. So, you know, we want to see how this plays out over the course of the next couple of days. But so this is a possibility that we should see at least a two-day rally, two to three-day rally to the upside. The other reason why I would say, there's a couple of reasons to say why it's possible that this is a bottom, John. That first one comes from, well, the second one, the second reason, this first one, the second reason is what we took a look at in the five-hour chart. But the third reason would be this. We'll go look at the five-hour chart momentarily. Is if I take a look at the semiconductor index, which had a nice Rhodes momentum indicator top out there uh, for about four or five days ago, uh, what price did is it's pulled back to its breakout level, 225.42. So the actual low this morning was 225.71. You know, so that's close. So key level of support is held here. Price is below profiles. So the question is, if it's just a counter trend move to the downside, then where the SMH, uh, the uh, semiconductor ETF out there, will find resistance would be at 233.55. But John, based upon the daily uh, pattern that we take a look at of potential two to three bar knee jerk reactions, the semis holding support, and then the final piece of that puzzle, I believe, comes from that five hour time frame chart. Again, it does not close until 2 p.m., folks, but we can see that price has not been above this level. That's the oscillator and change line ever since the uh, decline that started back at about five o'clock in the afternoon on August the 16th. And now price is taking on the resistance level of the top of its profile, which is a 12, 979.50. So a close above that, John, just adds to the idea of yes, that this could be a bottom out here. And we see a rally that I would expect takes us back above the highs, the current highs. 
Very good. I appreciate that, and uh, that's very helpful. And I did want to get your view and compare it to mine here as we approach the uh, the Jackson Hole speeches upcoming. Yes, uh, and then uh, next week, which is that pre-holiday week. So, uh, so thanks a bunch, uh, and we'll uh, we'll see if uh, if uh, the market uh, proves a bottom or not. Appreciate it, Steve. You bet. John, always good to hear from you. Thanks so much for the call. That was John in Philly. And folks, of course, I'd love to hear from you as well at 877-927-6648. Let's go to our first question that has come in by email. Uh, this one from Alton. And Alton wants to take a look at uh, uh, platinum uh, via the ETF PPLT. So let's switch over to those three time frame charts out there. Give us a moment here. And you've got PPLT. Now, his question goes on to say, I hope all is well. It is. I hope uh, the same for you. You're in PPLT at $87 area, right now trading at $81.41. Do you think I should add the position considering its price? And if so, at what level? Uh, Greg Paul, by the way, natural gas. Uh, thank you. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, PPLT. So what you don't like about this, Alton, right now is that Price is trading below the bottom of its breakout level at 81.45. We're at 81.43. It's trying to get back inside there. If it doesn't get back inside there, 79.59 would be the next target level. Now, today we'll form bar number seven. The ideal place to add uh, to a position or begin a new position would, I would say, if this forms a TD9 count bottom. Uh, now, in order to do that, tomorrow needs to see a low, uh, a low, a spike below today's low to at least set a bar number, uh, bar number eight out there. So that says you could see a bottom in PPLT between tomorrow, Thursday, and Monday of next week. Now we're going to go take a look at the uh, the October futures contract because just to see if we've got the same pattern out there. Um, if I look at the weekly time frame chart, price is pulling back into its bullish structured profile level. So that is suggesting that the range, the entry area, be between 78.89 and 80.82. So we got 79.59 as the next breakout level for PPLT. Um, so that kind of fits into that scenario. And then you've got a monthly, you've got a monthly TD9 count top. And price pulled back last week, got almost down to the breakout level of 76.02. But what we saw take place this week is a test and rejection of that red oscillator and change line. And that is still bare. So it does look like platinum wants to move lower. PPLT wants to move lower. And I'd be watching that 79.59 level and really be watching between, I'd really be come back to this on, you know, have a stop in place, but we'd come back, we should come back to this on Monday. Uh, Wednesday. Uh, we can come back to it on Friday as well out there to uh, take a look at it. So I hope that answered your question. I'd say no, now is not the time to to add your position. And I would definitely have a stop in place. You might say, where where should that stop be? So I don't know what, what your position size was. Um, you know, but I, at least I've given you the current parameters. Now let's take a look at just the daily time frame chart here for platinum. And the daily time frame chart, what this shows us, we are also in bar number seven. So here's a daily chart for platinum. Here's a daily chart for PPLT. I just simply kind of expand this to the downside. We'll leave them both on that way. Everybody can take a look at it. Now, in the case of platinum, the October contract, again, trading below its first breakout level. I don't see any kind of a bottoming pattern or signal. Bar number seven today, what price would need to actually do on the platinum contract is spike below the low from bar number five. And that low is 855.60. So what you're really looking for is some type of spike below 855.60, not a close below it, but at least a spike below it. And that you would like to see that take place tomorrow, Friday, or Monday. And that that could set up the TD9 count bottom. And if we do get that, then at least what platinum should do is bounce up towards its oscillator and change line that's currently printed at 899.10. So that's how we take a look at platinum out there right now. Alton, I hope that that helps you out. And uh, best of luck to you in that trade. The next question coming in from G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. G-Man wants to take a look at SQM. So let's get that populated on our screens out here. And SQM sounds like it should be familiar to me, but it's not uh, ringing a bell just yet. Uh, but we're going to ring a bell. So SQM is uh, Sociedad Quimica y Minera. And I have no idea what that means. Um, so, and I totally butchered that, uh, but it doesn't matter, right? We're, we're kind of agnostic as to what it is that we're looking at because we're just using patterns out here. So we take a look at the patterns for SQM. Price right now is trading right where a counter trend rally would end. And that is the center of its bullish structure daily profile. And that level is 102.25. 
We're trading at 102.34. So a close above 102.25, and I'm not too sure that 102.34 is going to do the trick out there. But if you do close back above 102. Uh, 25 out there that's going to suggest that this is not just a counter trend move or at least what it would suggest is that sqm should go target 109.88 that's coming from the daily time frame out there if this is where the counter trend rally ends what it could be doing is setting up an a to b equals cd to the downside oh stevie can't you be a little bit more precise than that i can't I'd be in his prison. Now, I would say that A to B equals CD pattern wouldn't come into play until you get back below the bottom of that daily profile at 100.34. So what do we see on the uh, weekly chart? The weekly chart looks bullish. Price above its profile, green oscillator and change line. The same thing for the uh, monthly time frame chart out there. Um, so watch this 102.25. G-Man, hope that helps you out. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Right now, we've got uh, all the U.S. equity uh, uh, indices pointed to the upside. Dow's up 138, S&P 22, NASDAQ 92, Russell's up 21. Some eyes are up about eight points right now. The trend is up 129. And we're going to go take a look at the uh, utility sector for Coda inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, Coda wants to add to a position. So we know about the uh, uh, energy sector out here. Uh, I've got uh, two different uh, topping signals. I've got wave number seven as one possible topping signal, but uh, we've also got a TD9 count top. Now, 
What Price has done here, Coda, is Price has pulled back yesterday we, and the day before, actually, we closed below the bottom of its daily profile. So we don't have a bottom signal as we speak just yet, uh, at least on a daily time frame. And what this could be signaling to us is that price will pull back into the 73.53 area. That is its TD9 count breakout area. When we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price made its way back to its highs, the highs from April. We're back below those levels. I don't have, well, by week's end, by Friday, you could have a sell the D point pattern. What I mean by that is that here's the A to B line. So we'll draw this in here, and then I'll just simply expand the A to B line to the C point. A to B, there's your C to D. This does more than a one-to-one. -one. You can, now are looking at the uh, bear sash candle that could form by Friday. I don't know if it will, but if it does, then you have a sell the D point pattern coder that suggests price should go target the 7444 level or whatever the oscillator and change line is at that point in time. But now you would have two topping signals, one on the daily, one on the weekly. You don't have a topping signal on the monthly. So I'd be paying more attention to the daily time frame chart, but as long as price remains below 7694, you know, that 7353 area, 7444 area is the target. Now, of course, we see price moving higher today. If we look at an intraday chart, or at least right now, and we take a look at a 30 minute time frame, here's a perfect example of wave number seven, that's letter G. This is a perfect example of a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. Both of those occurring at uh, 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon. And what we've seen take place now since then is price was below that bullish structured 30-minute profile. Right now, price is trying to take that out, 76.45 on a 30-minute chart, much like when we took a look at SQM on a 30-minute chart. If price closes above 76.45, it suggests that the rally that's underway right now for the 30-minute time frame is not just a counter trend move. And instead, what price would then do or should do is go target where the sellers are located. Those sellers are at 76.67. So watch 76.45. Uh, this is the bar that will close at 12 noon. If price is above it, look at 76.80, 76.67. Now, what happens if price closes above that? Well, the 30-minute chart says 77.97 would become the target. But really, we would come back and take a look at that daily profile which is at 76.94, that would be the real resistance area. So to answer your question, does it look like this is a good time to reload? It's, you, don't have that, you don't have that signal as we speak uh, just yet. You also wanted to take a look at SPLV. So let's go take a look at SPLV, see what that is. Um, I don't know if this is uh, similar, but uh, we're gonna go take a look at it anyways. We don't have any other questions in the queue out there. So uh, folks, if you do want me to review something for you, and I would be happy to do that, either send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, uh, or uh, go ahead and uh, I give us a call at 877-927-664, and of course, any ping inside the Tiger's Den. So this is the Invesco Exchange traded um, S&P low volatility ETF out there. So it looks very much like the uh, XLU. And it's got the same, uh, it's got really the same patterns out here. Now, what I mean by the same patterns is that this is suggesting that price should pull back to 64.20. You're below, you've got a, you've got a sell the D point top out there. Should take price back to support. Well, it's below the bottom of the daily profile. It's below the oscillator and change line. The next level of support quota would be at 64.20. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, again, you could form a bear sash candle. That would confirm a sell the D point. Price right now is tinkering with the top of that weekly profile. The top of that weekly profile is at 65.44. We're trading at 65.47. A close below that would suggest to move back to 64.49. So we got 64.49-ish, 64.20. Those would be the areas that I would be looking at based upon the chart patterns at the moment uh, for SPLV. Now, now, real quickly here on the 30-minute chart to see if this can help you out at all. I don't have a bottom signal per se, and we do have price that should run into resistance at 65.51. So that's SPLV. That was for Coda inside the Tiger's Den, as well as the XL. You out there. Let's go to our next caller, which is Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. And it is the uh, miners that you want to take a look at. I know specifically it looks like you're calling about the Nugget, N-U-G-T. So how can I best help you here? Yeah, the only reason I isolated that is because I did buy into that this morning. There okay. was some weakness, you know, it was down at, I think I bought in around 2870, so I've got a little cushion in it. And I guess what I'm kind of debating is, 
I'm already, I, I did it through options. So I have yeah. call options, and I'm already up pretty nicely in them. So just debating if there's something that, that is, this is worth hanging on to. I've got some time in them, so I can do that, or I can just call it a day trade. So I just want to get your thoughts on, I'm sure we'll need to look at gold and the GDX and that, that whole package. Yeah, so uh, I, I do have the GDX up on my screen. I'll pull over the nugget for you just to give you uh, some of the parameters there. But inside the GDX specifically, first of all, there's a new profile that uh, has formed today. And uh, it doesn't show up on my uh, white background screens, but I do have it on the black background screens. So let me give you those parameters for the GDX. Support is at 2511. And this is a bearish structure daily profile. So the resistance zone is between 2654 and 2702. We can also see on the daily, t uh, this is the weekly, I take, I, oh, oh, I'm, I'm looking at a weekly chart and I just gave you the daily numbers. No wonder I didn't see it on this chart here. But still, there's a new daily profile that is formed. The reason I have the weekly chart up here, Brent, is because this week we have a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that has been triggered. And if price can close at least halfway into last week's bar, and we're very close to that level, then what we will get is a bullish piercing candle. And that will confirm a Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom. And what we did yesterday, I don't think I have all the data out here. Let me just do this real quickly here, Brent, for you, is I'll put a number of bars, 5,000 bars worth of data. This will take just a moment to populate. But what I did yesterday, and I'm going to do here today for everybody as well, is take us back in time to look for other Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom signals. And we had a cluster of them between July 24th and then the final bottom on uh, January 22nd out there. Each of these led into good rallies. Of course, the one from January 22nd led to a gigantic rally. So it does make sense since you have some time in this, I would say to stay put and wait to see how this week's candle completes. If you get that bullish candle out there, well, then that says what price needs to do is clear 2709. That's the oscillator and change line. If it can do that, then the final battle of resistance at the moment for the weekly time frame chart for the GDX would be 2799. If we don't get a bullish reversal candle, there's still a possibility that the A to B equals CD down pattern inside the GDX will still fulfill itself at 2152. So that's where you want to go ahead and use the new daily profile as well, which has that support level of 2511. With regard to the daily time frame, the daily time frame has a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. So you've got the nice signals there. Price just been consolidating sideways out here. Uh, but if price can close above 2660, then its battle, where the sellers are at, is at 2761. So you have 2799 on the weekly, 2761 on the daily as the real battleground areas. And so a close above 2799 is going to suggest that we do have a nice solid bottom inside of the GDX. Now, with regard to Nugget out here, this is the daily time frame, and Brent will come back to you right after the break, but it also has a new profile. Support is at 2829, resistance at 3227. Steve Rhodes with TFNM will be back to talk to Brent about Nugget or GDX as soon as we get back to this break. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, good folks. All the U.S. indices trading the upside. We've got Dow. Dow. We've got Brent from Martinez, California, on the uh, line. Uh, uh, your nickname now is Dow. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I, I shared with you the information about the GDX, the daily and the weekly, which are the most compelling pieces to uh, look at. What what additional information? What questions do you have that I can try to answer for you? I do. Thank you for that, Steve. I heard you talking about that yesterday, and that's why I had interest in it and when i saw that weakness this morning i tried to take advantage of that so um yeah. it's been and, kind of a challenging trade i've just been day trading it up to this point and so yes. i just i mean i would love to see some kind of a you know a change in trend and something that is lasting would be great so we'll see. I, I guess like, that remains to be seen yeah i agree with you wholeheartedly and uh when the uh when the rose momentum indicator signal was triggered and i think i might have caught that on uh monday or so um, then I went back historically to take a look at the chart and say, okay, you typically that pattern is a real significant uh, pattern, especially on the longer term time frames out there. So, but we still need that candle to form out here. But the good news is you also have a good level of support uh, in a price close below 2511. That's that daily profile that could be signaling some potential problems out there. So, uh, Brent, as always, good to uh, speak to you. And uh, hopefully we'll speak to you again. But if not before the end of the week, have a, a great week and a great weekend. Yeah, thank you so much, Steve, for that, that work that uh, was very helpful, and as always. And then thank you for the help today. Just have a, sure. have a great day. Sure, you bet. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Let's get to uh, some questions that have come in by email here. Uh, uh, we've got David in Tomball, Texas. Can you give your analysis on uh, Chenier Energy, LNG? Absolutely. So let's get LNG up on the screen here. So we know that natural gas formed that TD9 count top, and I believe price was trading below <clears throat> its oscillator and change line. And that is suggesting that natural gas I should pull back further. Uh, that's as long as natural gas closes below 918. I see we're at 921 right now. So 918 is the key level. If you did get a close below 918, that's going to suggest a move for natural gas back to 883 or 822. With regard to LNG, though, there is no top in place for the daily time frame. In fact, if anything, yesterday confirmed a large momentum move to the upside because it took out its TD9 count top. However... Okay, there's an A to B equals CD pattern out here. So let's go take a look at it. So here's our A to B line. We'll draw that out there. We'll just take that over to the C to D level just to see where we're at in that move. And it turns out we're at the completion of the one-to-one -one area, almost right to the tick. Now, what we don't have today yet is a bearish reversal candle. Only if we get a bearish reversal candle is that going to signal, David, that price wants to go ahead and move back to 165.28 or thereabouts. That's the daily oscillator and change line. So this, you stay with this trade out here. You especially stay with it because we don't really have a topping, 
Well, we have a topping signal on the weekly, and that is wave number seven. But that won't confirm until you get a lower closing, a, a lower high on a weekly base. So we couldn't get a confirmation of that until next week. The monthly chart for LNG uh, has negated its TD9 on top. So monthly is saying stay with the trade. Weekly is saying stay with the trade, but we could see a short-term top. Daily says stay with the trade unless we get a bearish reversal candle. And then even if we do that, just expect or anticipate a retracement back to support, which right now is in that 165.25 level. So I would stay with this trade. I do hope that helps you out, uh, David. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. LB writes in. He says, uh, big news out on uranium overnight. Can you take a second look at the URA charts? And we most certainly can. I saw that as well. I saw it gap up or trade higher. To, whoops, you are... That's not going to work. Oh, here we go. We've got URA. So let's get that up on our screen out here. This is the ETF, I believe, for uranium. Ah, whoops. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. So, yeah, you can see that gap to the upside out here and running right into resistance, Lee, which is right at that TD9 count breakdown area of 2208. So you're at 2195. You're trading above the top of a new profile that is formed. So that's pretty nice out there. But however, it's still trading right into resistance. 2208, that is where the sellers are located. If price can close above that, then what would be the signal? I would say the signal then would be back to its prior high out here, and that would become the target. And that's in the uh, that's at the high, it looks like, from the trading day of June the 8th. And that would be between 2421 and 2326 out there. The weekly chart. Price is trading above the top of its profile out there. So that's a positive. The monthly chart, uh, price is just consolidating with inside its profile. So this is pretty easy, Lee. Uh, if price can take out 2208, you've got a, a breakout to the upside. And if it can close above the actual numbers, if it can close above 2212 with more than 1.9 million shares, well, guess what it has today already, Lee? You already know this. 3.2 million shares. If it can close above that, then we will have a, another A to B equals CD pattern. Now, what I mean? What do I mean by another A to B equals CD pattern? Great question. I guess myself. That, that's not why I said it was a great question. But let's go take a look at that answer. So here's the first A to B equals CD pattern that we have out there. But we've got new information. We've got another B point that is under attack of an A to B equals CD. That's that uh, bear shooting star from the trading day of August the 11th. So, if in fact price takes that level out then what you're going to have did i change the screens yeah, i did okay uh then what you're going to have is the a to b equals cd pattern that would look like this there we go and the c point being the uh, august 22nd and one to one would get you to 2365 but this is an explosive move off of the c point out here this gap to the upside it's really a wide ranging bar so again it closed above 2213 out there is going to suggest to move to 2365, 2486, 2641 would be its target. So uh, stay with the trade. I know that you're in this uh, and you're looking for that close above that 2213 level. Uh, Hector writes in, Hector and Patty, and says, Hey, Steve, oh, happy wacky Wednesday. Wanting, waiting, wanting Wednesday. Well, I totally butchered that. But what I won't butcher is the symbol that uh, Hector and Patty want to take a look at SCWST. CWST has a nice high volume high. Is this little dude back on the way to make a run for that high? Support resistance, please. So CWST right now on its daily time frame, Hector, has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And price is pulled back and is trading below its daily profile. This could be day number two below that level. That profile level to watch is, uh, where is it? It's, uh, it's right here. It's hard for 86.61. 86.61. If price stays below that today, close below that today, then the signal is we've got further to go. Now, the next level of support on a daily time frame takes us to 72.50. The next level of support, you've also got a TD9 count on the weekly time frame that will complete this week as long as price closes above 80.95. And right now you're trading at 83.70. So I know your question is, hey, this has got a nice high volume high. I haven't taken a look at where that is at right now. But just simply trying to answer the question for you, what is CWST doing right now for you? And you got a daily top, and it looks like you're getting a weekly top. And all of this is suggesting a further move to the downside out there. Now, the weekly support level is around the 79.64 area. It's 79.63, 79.64. That's the oscillator and change line and the bottom of the weekly profile out there. 
You've got a TD9 count top that is still in place out here for the monthly time frame. Price running into resistance. That's the sell zone of that bearish structured profile out there. So the question was, will this get back to that high volume high? It's not doing it anytime soon out here. I always say anytime soon. First, it has to deal with the topping patterns that it has in place out here. And then we need to find the next bottom. We just don't have that signal just yet. So Hector and Patty, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much as always for writing in. And you have a wonderful, wacky, waiting, wanting Wednesday. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got the charts here for EQT. That is uh, the EQT Corporation up on our screen. Uh, yesterday uh, confirmed a uh, wave number. What? Uh, where are we at? So really what we have out here is a nice TD9 count top. And that uh, TD9 count top uh, formed a couple of days ago. Yesterday you did have a big old bearish engulfing candle. But all price was doing yesterday, Dan, was pulling back and testing that green oscillator and change line. So even though you have a top, yesterday's signal is really neutral. Now what we have today is price is back above the top of its daily profile. It held that green oscillator and change line. So the signal is really neutral out here for EQT. I mean, really strong looking uh, chart uh, out here, as long as price remains above that 47.74 level out there. So the last question is, last question is from uh, inside the Tiger's Den. And it was from uh, Inno, or at least that's the uh, nickname out there. And the question was, uh, general question, time permitted, of course, you have so many signals oftentimes giving contrary feedback. How do you sort it all out so it's useful to you? So the, the, the first 
uh, response would be, what time frame is it that you are trading, that you made a trading decision based upon? And then you just simply try to stay with that time frame. Here is the NQ right now. And so in the case of the NQ, and the reason that we use these multi time frame charts out here, you know, is because if we're going to see market turns, as price pulls back to support, let's say, uh, if we're, we're going to see market turns, we're going to see those turns occur on the intraday charts first. So a lot of times when we're taking, like here, we've got a 10 minute, a 15 minute, a 30 minute, a 60 minute out here. What we're looking for there are confirmation signals of what we really were taking a look at on the, for example, today on the five hour time frame chart. So we're using those to say, okay, we've got nice bottoms there. We saw resistance levels fail, 12,927 on the 10 minute chart, 12,904 on the 15 minute chart, 12,904 on the uh, 30 minute chart and then 12 9 on that so we're seeing these resistance levels fail out here and then back to that five hour time frame chart again this candle will not close till 2 p.m out here but you are above the top of its profile above that oscillator and change line which it hasn't been for quite some time all of that then suggests to me okay we've got more of a rally to go out here but all these levels have to hold and certainly have got to hold by two o'clock today so I hope that helps answer your question. But uh, as we look through charts out there, what I'd like you to do is point out a specific chart to answer that question or just answer it a little bit better. Folks, stay tuned. you got great programming. We'll see you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday.